Disc jockey, drop the bass. Now the heads. Racist murderer and walking contraceptive advert Dylan Roof has been sentenced to death. Personally, I blame the hairdresser because I don't think you can make someone look like Guy Gardner or Mo from the Stooges without there being consequences. But this does, joking aside, literal gallows humour aside, give us a chance to talk about the death sentence and its validity or lack thereof in a clear-cut case, or relatively clear-cut anyway. So let's do that, because that sounds like a fun thing to do on a Friday morning. The death penalty is consistently more popular with the people as a whole than it is with the ruling classes. This may be due to ancestral fear of the guillotine, or it may just be that people who are in the know about law, and a lot of our politicians are, are trained as lawyers, are just more in the know and understand the, the problems that there are with the death sentence. The majority of objections come over the idea that maybe, possibly, we might execute the wrong person. And this happens more often than you might think, and used to happen far more often before we had genetic evidence to much more strongly link people to their crimes. Of course, we'll never know, necessarily, how many people have been wrongfully executed because you kind of stop investigating the crimes. So you may never, ever find out exactly how bad it's been. But the chief objection seems to be that, that we might kill the wrong people. Personally, my objection to it is much more strongly on the grounds that killing people is wrong. And there's a base hypocrisy in the idea of punishing people for doing something that you say is wrong by doing that thing itself. That's not to say there shouldn't be some kind of punishment, but death is so final, so absolute. I mean, we say that kidnapping is wrong, you know, taking someone and locking them up against their will and, and keeping them there, you know, wrongful imprisonment and so on, but we allow for imprisonment. So there's got to be some leeway there. We have to accept some degree of hypocrisy in, in the way that we punish people. But that doesn't mean that there can't be better options. And death is final, you know, life, actual life imprisonment is, is different. Um, it is something that can be revoked. If, if you've made a mistake, it's something that can be compensated for. If you have a prisoner in prison, then perhaps there's an opportunity for them to pay back some of that debt to society in the form of work. If slavery is wrong, indentured servitude is wrong, but as a punishment to pay off a debt, perhaps, no matter what you do in terms of punishment, there's always going to be a grey area because you're always doing something wrong to punish something wrong. But again, death is so absolutely final with absolutely no possibility of reform. It does ne it never seems like a proportionate punishment for anything, even even genocide. Now, as I said, Dylan Roof provides a, an absolute best case scenario for people who are pro death penalty. There's no question that he did it. There's an uncoerced confession to doing the crime. You know, he was caught red-handed. He's completely unrepentant. You know, it's people saying he's irredeemable. There's no chance of reforming him. I don't necessarily think that's true. But there's a couple of things, I guess. He's relatively young, and the relatives of the victims, the, the church, don't want him killed. But other than that, it's as clear-cut a case as you can hope to get. You know, we have none of these questions hanging over, you know, whether he absolutely, definitely did it, and so on. But still, even so, I would say no, it is not right to kill him. You kill him, that's, that's an end to it. We can't learn anything from someone who's dead. We can't come to understand, or to better understand, this kind of psychology. Maybe he can be reformed. Maybe by attempting to, we can learn in such a way that we can reform people like him in the future. As I said, he could work and in some small measure pay back his debt to society, though I think any proceeds from that work should go to the families of the victims rather than to the government or whichever private company happens to be running that prison in the States. That's a whole other topic to 
to dig into and now's not really the time. So, you know, there, there's plenty of ways in which even an unquestioned mass murderer can be of use. Um, th th there's a point to keeping them alive. Not just so we, th that we retain our own humanity, because when the state executes someone, we're all complicit. But in terms of helping the victims, in helping society, in helping science and psychology and sociology and understanding racism and the pathology of these sorts of points of view, understanding how he came to be like he is and all these kind of things so that we can hopefully avoid that kind of extremism in the future. So really there's, whenever you punish someone you have to compromise your beliefs and your morality to some extent, but death is absolutely final there's no you get nothing from it and it even in the cases like this it's usually cheaper if you want to get down to to brass tacks of cost benefit analysis because he's still going to have to go through another trial and whether there'll be appeals or not we don't know yeah that's hugely expensive and eats up a lot of time um, and it's just it's actually works out pretty much cheaper to just hold someone for life anyway those are my thoughts on the matter I'm sure many of you will violently disagree and you're welcome to type in all caps in the comments and shout at me <laughs> Zang